All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about bird communication and show you two of the most common types of communication in birds. Really start to unpack how birds communicate with the different calls and songs that they have. And this is one of the first steps in understanding bird language and being able to interpret what the birds are saying about your environment. You might notice, for example, that birds are actually communicating different messages depending on whether they're singing or whether they're giving alarm calls or other types of calls and sounds that birds make. So um, often when I work with people who are new to learning about birds and bird language, they don't actually realize that you know birds have songs and birds have calls. And these are really two very different types of communication. So that's what we're gonna to explore together here. And you'll see on the screen, I have a few examples of real life bird songs and calls that I'm gonna play for you and unpack a little bit of the meaning behind what the birds are saying in these clips. And I think at the end of this video, you're gonna feel pretty confident about making sense of the birds and their sounds and really knowing the difference between a song and a call. So uh, first off, I've got a, a little example here of a song made by a sparrow. And one of the things that I want to show you here is that there are actually a lot of really simple cues that can be heard in the sounds themselves that let you know whether you're hearing a, a call or a song from a bird. And I'm using a fancy schmancy computer program called Audacity that will actually turn the sounds we're gonna be listening to into a picture so you can actually see the sound. And these little jumbles of sound here on the screen are actually representations of a song from a sparrow. You'll notice that it's a whole mishmash of noise. It kind of goes all over the place. And uh, this little thing here is actually a call from a different bird. So I'll talk about calls in a minute, um, but what you're gonna hear is that this song from a sparrow is a whole mixture of trills and whistles at various pitches all smushed together. And then there's a space of maybe, you know, 10 seconds before it repeats again. And it just repeats over and over again. This is very characteristic of songs, as you're going to see. So let's just listen, and then we'll talk more about it and what it means. So one of the defining characteristics of songs made by birds is that they are long, drawn out, variable, and sometimes melodic sequences of noise. And you know, if we were to make a, a list of descriptive words for songs, we might say musical, trilling, whistling, variable, magical, pleasant, long, drawn out, repetitive. And anytime you hear a bird, making a series of sounds like what we just played, you know, that's a song. And you can identify that sound as being song, even if you don't know what kind of bird is making that sound. You know, you could be visiting some far off distant landscape with totally unfamiliar birds, and you would still know that it's a song. So bird songs are used to demonstrate territory. They're used to attract a mate and protect the space where they gather food and make their nests from rival birds. It also is a good indicator for bird language that a bird is not alarmed about a predator because birds do not sing when their life is in immediate danger. So you really get a good glimpse into the life of birds when you hear a song happening on the landscape. Let's play another example here just to show you some of the variation that's possible. This is an example of a goldfinch song. It's a little bit more melodious. It's a little bit less trilly and scattered, uh, but it still has all the classic indicators of bird song because it's this long, drawn out, repetitive mishmash of sound and pitch. So I'll play this one and then we'll move on to talk about bird calls. A 
Okay, so let's talk about bird calls and the simplest difference between bird songs and bird calls is really that calls lack the almost musical or telephonic quality of songs. Really, a call is just a short burst of sound. They're not melodious, they don't trill like a telephone, um, they're really pretty plain sounding when compared to songs. So sometimes they can be very loud, sometimes they can be uh, actually fairly quiet. Um, so there's still quite a bit of variation, but a call really is unmistakably different from a song because it's just a very simple burst of sound. So let's go ahead and pull up our example here. That That's really the easiest way to get it. You know, you'll see these little bursts here. Um, these are calls from a bird. And I believe that this is the call of a starling in this clip. And you know, it's pretty random. They're just all over the place, not really following any particular rhythm here. And uh, up here, there's actually another call. This one's much quieter. It might be a little bit challenging to hear on the recording. Um, I believe that this is the companion call of a junco. Um, but the key thing to notice is that in every case, calls are just short bursts of sound and, and really pretty plain. So then as we get later into this clip, um, over here where I have this marker, you'll notice that we start getting some song coming in. So pay attention for that. And really don't worry about the species of birds. Don't worry about the difference between uh, sparrows and starlings and robins. Just track in your mind for the difference between calls and songs. And you'll be able to hear a wide variety of both in this clip. So here we go. Okay, so bird calls are most commonly used for the purpose of friendly communication between mated pairs of birds or between flocks of birds. You know, you might call that a companion call, and that's what we just heard in that clip. Uh, in those cases, they're usually fairly quiet and soft. You sometimes have to listen pretty carefully to actually notice them, um, but calls are also used for territorial purposes and in alarm situations. And in those situations, you'll probably notice much more intense vocalizations. So if we were to make a, a list of descriptive word for calls, we might say that calls are short, bursting, repeating, loud, quiet, peak, tut, tack, tip, chip, chat, pip. Um, and there's obviously a huge range from, from very mellow back and forth calling to absolute screaming for my life alarm calls. So uh, knowing these two high level categories of sounds made by birds, that's really one of the highest level distinctions that's really important for understanding bird language and understanding the communication that's always happening between birds. And so the next time you go outside, you know, just hold that question in the back of your mind while you're listening to the birds. Am I hearing a bird call or am I hearing a bird song? And I think you'll immediately start to notice when you do that, that you're just much more tuned in with the birds and it really prepares your ears and your listening skills to move on to deeper levels of understanding the language of birds. So if you like this stuff, if you're excited to go deeper with bird language, I created a bird language adventure where I'll talk about a whole bunch more things to notice about bird behavior and bird communication. So I'll put a link on this page to that series of free videos and I would love to guide you through using bird language to get more tuned with your environment and learn about the wildlife of your local area through the voices of the birds. You know, this is me, my name is Brian Mertens. 
I've used bird language to completely change the way that I think about nature and relate to the communication of birds. My personal specialty is that I've spent a huge amount of time unlocking the secrets of alarm calls, and I frequently use bird alarm calls to locate crazy, wild, intense animals like cats and owls and things like that. So if you want to come explore bird language with me, uh, all you have to do is click that link on this page to that series of free videos, and you can go ahead and get started on your bird language adventure. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your comments and questions, and I will talk to you next time.